Hello everyone, my name is Natalie Lee Owens, and if you're new, welcome to Buy Black and Bookish, a booktube channel where a buy black girl who reads too much is really getting into the springtime mood. Spring is my favorite season, not only because of the light jacket weather or the fact that my birthday is in spring, along with both of my siblings, but also because I've always, I've, for the past year, I've associated one of my favorite IPs with spring and that IP is the Finnish children's classic Moomins by Tove Janssen. I didn't start getting into Moomin until like I want to say four to five years ago near like the boom on tumblr. I just saw a whole bunch of art about it and I thought it was really cute so I watched um I watched anything I could get my hands on, on like on YouTube for the um, 90s show. And, but also when I fell for it, I fell for it hard. I, it's so cute and charming and there's something sad yet whimsical and hopeful about it. Um, and the show from the 90s is one of my go-to shows whenever I'm not feeling so good, mentally speaking. Um, so today to celebrate the spring season, I'll be reading the first book in the series, The Moomins in the Great Flood. So while I'll be reading, I'll try to scan um, the pictures from the books because it's the book's only 64 pages, but most of it's like illustrations. So I'll be trying to scan them and put them over to the side over here, which is why I'm off center. But um, so in 1991, Tove Janssen uh, wrote like a preface for the first book, which came out in 1945. It was the winter of war in 1939. One's work stood still. It felt completely pointless to try to create pictures. Perhaps it was understandable that I suddenly felt an urge to write down something that has to begin with once upon a time. What followed had to be a fairy tale. That was inevitable. But I excused myself with avoiding princesses, princesses, and small children and chose instead my angry signature character from the cartoons and called him the Moomin Troll. The half-written story was forgotten until 1945. Then a friend pointed out that it could become a children's book. Just finish it and illustrate it. Maybe they will want it. I had thought that the title should connect to the Moomin Troll and his search for his father and the style of the search for Captain Grant, but the publisher wanted to make it easier for the readers by calling it Sma Trollen Uchdin Stora Over Zvimenji. I cannot say that. <laughs> I cannot say that last word. Um, the Little Trolls in the Great Flood. The story is quite influenced by the childhood books I had read and loved, a bit of Jules Verne and some Kolodi, the girl with the blue hair and so on. But why not? Anyhow, here was my very first happy ending. The Moomins in The Great Flood. It must have been late in the afternoon one day at the end of August when Moomin Troll and his mother arrived at the deepest part of the Great Forest. It was completely quiet and so dim between the trees that it was as though twilight had already fallen. Here and there, giant flowers grew, glowing with a peculiar light like flickering lamps, and furthest in among the shadows moved tiny dots of cold green. Glowworms, said Moom and Mama, but they had no time to stop and take a closer look at them. They were out searching for a snug, warm place where they could build a house to crawl into when winter came. Moomins cannot stand the cold at all, so the house would have to be ready by October at the latest. So they walked on further and further into the silence and the darkness. Little by little, Moomin Troll began to feel anxious, and he asked his mother in a whisper if she thought there were any dangerous creatures in there. I shouldn't think so, she said, though so perhaps we'd better go a little faster anyhow, but I hope we're so small that we won't be noticed if something dangerous should come along. Suddenly, Moomin Troll gripped his mother's 
tightly by the arm. Look, he said, so frightened that his tail stuck straight out. From the shadows behind a tree trunk, two eyes were staring at them. At first, Moom and Mama was frightened too, but then she said soothingly, It's really a very little creature. Wait, and I'll shine a light on it. Everything looks worse in the dark, you know. And so she picked one of the big glowing flowers and lit up the shadows with it. Then they saw that they really was a very little creature sitting there and that it looked friendly and a little scared. There, you see, said Moom and Mama. What sort of thing are you? Asked the little creature. I'm a Moomin Troll, answered Moomin Troll, who had had time to feel brave again. And this is my mother. I hope we didn't disturb you. You can see that his mother had taught him to be polite. Not at all, said the little creature. I was sitting here feeling rather sad and longing for company. Are you in a big hurry? Yes, said Moomin Mama. You see, we're looking for a nice sunny place where we can build a house, but perhaps you'd like to come with us. And how, said the little creature, leaping out towards them. I got lost, thought I'd never see the sun again. So all three continued taking a large tulip with them to light the way. But around them, the darkness thickened all the time. The flowers glowed more faintly beneath the trees. And finally, the very last one went out. In front of them gleamed a black stretch of water and the air was heavy and cold. I think they're implying that the Moomin Trolls are like minuscule. I didn't know that because in the cartoon, the 90s cartoon, that the one that most people are familiar with, they seem to be like regular human sized. At least that's under their assumption that the human-like creatures are also human-sized. So maybe they're also very small. Hmm. Because they're using like a tulip as a, as like a light, I guess. Oh, how horrid, said the little creature. That's the swamp. I don't dare go there. Why not? Asked Moom and Mama. Because that's where the great serpent lives said the little creature in a very low voice, looking about him in all directions. Pooh, said Moomin Troll, wanting to show how brave he was. We are so small that we shouldn't be noticed. How will we ever find the sunshine if we don't dare cross it? Just come along with us. Perhaps a bit of the way, said the little creature, but be careful, own your own heads be it. So they took long strides as quietly as they could from Tusok to Tusok. The black mud bubbled and whispered all around them, but as long as the tulip lamp burned, they felt calm. At one point, Mumintro slipped and nearly fell in, but his mother caught hold of him at the last moment. We shall have to go on by boat, she said. Now your feet are soaked. You're sure to catch a cold. Then she got out a pair of dry socks for him from her handbag and lifted him and the little creature up onto a big round water lily leaf. They all three stuck their tails in the water as paddles and then they steered straight out into the swamp. Beneath them, they glimpsed dark creatures that swam in and out between the roots of the trees. There was splashing and diving sounds and the mist came stealing over them. Suddenly, the little creature said, I want to go home now. Don't, don't be scared, little creature, said Moomin Troll in a quavering voice. We'll sing something cheerful, and at that very moment, the tulip went out, and it was completely dark, and out of the darkness, they heard a hissing and felt the water lily leaf bobbing up and down. Quick! Quick, cried Moom and Mama, the great serpent is coming. They stuck their tails in deeper and paddled with all their might so the water gushed around the bows. Now they could see the serpent swimming up behind them. It looked wicked and its eyes were cruel and yellow. They paddled as hard as they could, but it kept gaining on them and was already opening its mouth with its long flickering tongue. 
Moomin Troll put his hands in front of his eyes and cried, Mama! And then he waited to be eaten up. But nothing happened. Then he looked cautiously between his fingers. Something very remarkable had happened. Their tulip was glowing again. It had opened all of its petals and in the midst stood a girl with bright blue hair reaching right down to her feet. Brighter and brighter glowed the tulip. The serpent began to blink and suddenly it turned right round with an angry hiss and slid down into the mud. Moomin Troll, his mother and the little creature were so agitated and surprised that for a long time they couldn't say a word. At last, Moomin Mama said solemnly, Thank you so very much for your help, lovely lady. And Moomin Troll bowed more deeply than he had ever done before, for the blue-haired girl was the most beautiful thing he had seen in all his life. Were you inside the tulip the entire time? asked the little creature shyly. It's my house, she said. You can call me Tulupa. And so they paddled slowly over to the other side of the swamp. Here the ferns were thick, and beneath them Moomin Mama made a nest in the moss for them to sleep in. Moomin Troll lay close beside his mother, listening to the song of the frogs out in the swamp. The night was full of strange, desolate sounds, and it was a long time before he fell asleep. The next morning, Talipa led the way in front of them, and her blue hair shone like the brightest daylight lamp. The path climbed steeper and steeper, and at last the mountain rose straight up so high that they could not see where it ended. I expect there's sunshine up there, the little creature said no longingly. I'm so dreadfully cold. Me too, said Moomin Troll, and then he sneezed. What did I say? said his mother. Now you've got a cold. Please sit here while I make a fire. And then she gathered together an enormous heap of dry branches and lit it with a spark from Talipa's blue hair. They sat, all four of them, looking into the fire while Moom and Mama told them stories. She told them about what it was like when she was young, when Moom and Trolls did not need to travel through fearsome forests and swamps in order to find a place to live in. In those days, they lived together with the house trolls in people's houses, mostly behind their tall stoves. Some of us still live there now, I'm sure, said Moom and Mama, but only where people still have stoves, I mean. We're not happy with central heating. Did the people know we were there, said Moom and Troll. Some did, said his mother. They felt us mostly as a cold drop on the back of their necks sometimes when they were alone. Tell us something about Moom and Papa, asked Moom and Troll. He was an unusual Moomin Troll, said his mother, thoughtfully and sad. He was always wanting to move from one stove to the next. He was never happy where he was, and then he disappeared, took off the hat of fatteners, the little wanderers. What sort of folk are they? asked the little creature. A kind of little troll creature, explained Moomin Mama. They're mostly invisible. Sometimes they can be found under people's floors and you can hear them pattering about in there when it's quiet in the evenings. But mostly they wander around the world, don't stay anywhere, and don't care about anything. You can never tell if a Hathen Fattener is happy or angry, sad or surprised. I am sure they have no feelings at all. And has Moom and Papa become a Hathen Fattener now? asked Moomin Troll. No, of course not, said his mother. Surely you realize that they simply tricked him into going along with them. Imagine if we were to meet him one day, said Talipa. He'd be pleased, wouldn't he? I believe there was an episode where they talked about how the Moomin Trolls are essentially descendants from these little people who lived uh, underneath, underneath stoves. I think it was... Um, during the winter episode it was the episode where so the moomins usually hibernate during winter but 
Moomin Troll woke up in like the middle of his hibernation and then he went out and saw like um he saw the Gork which is like this um large purple figure I'm not even sure what it's supposed to be um and then I think they also came across the little the little people that they were descendants of and I think Moomin Papa told him that there I think there was also an episode where they mentioned that had to fatness. It's interesting to see how aspects of this went on to be included to to the canon that most people are familiar with and other things no one really knows. <laughs> and like the little creature looks like Sniff, which is like the kangaroo looking kind of, of friend that they have. Of course, said Moom and Mama. But I don't expect we shall. And then she cried. It sounded so sad that they all began to sob. And as they cried, they began to think about a lot of other things that were sad too. And that made them cry more and more. Talipa's hair turned pale with sorrow and lost all its shine. When they had gone on like this for a good while, a stern voice suddenly rang out and sang, What are you howling, O four down there? They stopped at once and looked around them in all directions, but could not discover who was talking to them. At the same time, a rope ladder came dangling down the rock face. High up, an old gentleman stuck his head out from a door in the mountain. Well, he shouted. Excuse me, said Talipa, curtsying. But you see, sir, it's really all very sad. Moom and Papa has disappeared, and we're freezing and can't get over this mountain to find the sunshine. We haven't anywhere to live. I see, said the old gentleman. You had better come up to my place then. My sunshine is the finest you could imagine. It was quite hard to climb up the rope ladder, especially for Moom and Troll and his mother, as they had such short legs. Now, you must wipe your feet, said the old gentleman and drew the ladder up after them. Then he closed the door very carefully so that nothing harmful could sneak inside. They all went up an escalator that carried them right inside the mountain. Are you sure this gentleman is to be trusted? Whispered the little creature. Remember, on your own heads be it. And then he made himself as small as he could and hid behind Moom and Mama. Then a bright light shone towards them, and the escalator took them straight into a wonderful landscape. The trees sparkled with color and were full of fruits and flowers they had never seen before, and below them in the grass lay gleaming white snowflakes. Hurrah! cried Moom and Troll, and ran out to make a snowball. Be careful, it's cold, called his mother. But when he ran his hands through the snow, he noticed that it was not snow at all, but ice cream. The green grass that gave way under his feet was made of fine spun sugar. Crisscross over the meadows ran brooks of every color foaming and bubbling over the golden sand. Green lemonade, cried the little creature who had stooped down to drink. It's not water at all. It's lemonade. Moom and Mama went straight over to a brook that was completely white, since she had always been very fond of milk. Most moon trolls are, at least when they get a bit older. Talipa ran from tree to tree, picking armfuls of chocolates and sweets, and as soon as she had plucked one of the shining fruits, another grew at once. Uh, this discretion is very Charlie and the Chocolate Factory-esque. Uh, it makes me wonder when, um, when Charlie and the Chocolate Factory came out. Not Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. That's the, like, early 2000s movie. I think it's called Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. My mistake. But, um, it makes me wonder when that came out. So this was written in 1945, near the end of World War II. And of, so, of course, a lot of people were struggling financially. Uh, so it makes me wonder, would this kind of 
imagery of like an abundance of food and not even just like normal food but like rare food that you can't find during the time it makes me wonder if uh willy wonka and his chocolate factory was written in a similar time uh as this was they forgot their sorrows and ran further and further into the enchanted garden the old gentleman slowly followed them and seemed very pleased by their wonder and admiration. I made all this myself, he said, the sun too. And when they looked at the sun, they noticed that it really was not the real sun, but a big lamp with fringes of gold paper. I see, said the little creature with disappointment. I thought it was the real sun. Now I see that it has a slightly peculiar light. Well, that was the best I could do, said the old gentleman, offended. But you like the garden, don't you? Oh, yes, said Moomin Troll, whose mouth was full of pebbles just then. They were actually made of marzipan. If you could like to stay here, I would build you a candy house to live in, said the old gentleman. I get a bit bored here sometimes all on my own. That would be very nice, said Moomin Mama. But if you don't mind, we must really be on our way. We were thinking of building a house in the real sunshine, you see. No, let's stay, cried Moomin Troll, the little creature in Talipa. Well, children, said Moomin Mama, wait and see. And she laid down to sleep under a chocolate bush. When she woke up again, she heard a fearful groaning and realized at once that it was her Moomin Troll who had a tummy ache. Moomins get tummy aches very easily. It had become quite round from all he had eaten and hurt dreadfully. Beside him sat the little creature who had gotten a toothache from all the sweets and was moaning even worse. Moomin Mama did not scold but took two powders from her handbag and gave them one each and then she asked the old gentleman if he did not have a pool of nice hot porridge. No, I'm afraid not, he said. But there's one of whipped cream and another one of jam. Hmm, said Moomin Mama. You can see for yourself that it is proper hot food they need. Where's Talupa? She says she can't get to sleep because the sun never goes down, said the old gentleman looking at unhappy. I'm surely sorry that you don't like it here. We'll come back again, Moomin Mama counseled him. But now I really must see to it that we get out in the fresh air again. And so she took Moomin Troll by one hand and the little creature by the other and called to Talipa. You'll do best to take the switchback railway, said the old gentleman politely. It goes right through the mountain and comes out in the middle of the sunshine. Thank you, said Moomin Mama. Goodbye then. Goodbye then, said Talipa. Moomin Troll and the little creature were not able to say anything as they felt so horribly sick. Don't mention it, said the old gentleman, and then they took the switchback railway through the whole mountain at a dizzying speed. When they came out on the other side, they were quite giddy and sat on the ground for a long time recovering. Then they looked around. Before them lay the ocean glittering in the sunshine. I want to go for a swim, cried Moomin Troll, for now he felt all right again. Me too, said the little creature, and so they ran right out into the sunbeam on the water. Talipa tied her hair up so it would not go out, and then she followed them and stepped in very cautiously. Ah, it's so cold, she said. Don't stay in too long, called Moomin Mama. And then she lay down to sunbathe, for she was still quite tired. All at once, an ant lion came strolling across the sand. He looked very cross and said, This is my beach. You must go away. We certainly shan't, said Moomin Mama. So there. Then the ant lion began to kick sand in her eyes. He kicked and scratched until she could not see a thing. Closer and closer, he came and suddenly he began to dig himself into the sand, making the hole deeper and deeper around him. At last, only his eyes could 
be seen at the bottom of the hole and all the while he continued to throw sand at Mimi Mama. She had begun to slide down into the hole and was trying desperately to climb up again. Help! Help! She cried, spitting sand. Save me! Moomin Cho heard her and came rushing up out of the water. He managed to catch hold of her ears and pulled and struggled with all his might while he shouted rude names at the ant lion. The little creature and Talipa came and helped too, and then at last, they managed to haul Moomin Mama over the edge and she was rescued. The ant lion continued to dig himself in out of pure annoyance and no one knows if he ever found the way up again. It was a long while before they got the sand out of their ears and managed to calm down a little, but by then they had lost all their desire to swim and instead continued along the seashore in order to look for a boat. The sun was already going down and behind the horizon threatening black clouds were gathering. It looked as though there was going to be a storm. Suddenly, they caught sight of something moving further along the shore. It was a mass of small pale creatures pushing out a sailboat. Moomin Moon Mama looked at them for a long time and then she called loudly, Those are the Wanderers! Those are the Hatted Fatteners! I don't think I'm saying that right. It's too late now. Those are the Wanderers! Those are the hat and fatteners, and began to run towards them as fast as she could. By the time Moomin Troll and the little creature and Talipa got there, Moomin Mama was standing in the midst of the hat and fatteners, who only came up to her waist, talking and asking questions and waving her arms very excitedly. She asked over and over again if they really had not seen Moomin Papa, but the hat and fatteners only looked at her for a moment with their round colorless eyes and then went on pulling the boat toward the water. Oh dear, Moomin Mama exclaimed. I was in such a hurry that I forgot they can't speak or hear anything. And she drew a handsome Moomin troll in the sand with a big question mark after him. But Hat de Fatners did not bother about her at all. They had got the boat down into the sea and were busy hoisting the sails, it was also possible that they did not understand what she meant, for hat fatteners were very stupid. The black bank of cloud had now risen higher, and the waves were beginning to move on the sea. There's nothing for it. We shall have to go with them, said Moomin Mama at last. The shores look gloomy and deserted, and I don't feel like meeting another ant lion. Jump into the boat, children. Well, it's not on my head, mumbled the little creature, but he climbed on board after the others all the same. The boat steered out to sea with the hat to Fartner at the helm. The sky grew darker and darker all around. The tops of the waves had white foam on them and far away thunder was rumbling. As it fluttered in the gale, Talipa's hair glowed with a very faint light. Now I'm frightened again, said the little creature. I'm almost beginning to wish I hadn't come with you at all. Pooh, said Moomin Troll, but then he lost the desire to say any more and crept down beside his mother. Now and then came a wave that was bigger than all the others and splashed and over the bow. The boat sailed on with taut sails at a furious speed. Sometimes they saw a mermaid dance by on the crest of the waves. Sometimes they glimpsed a whole flock of little sea trolls. The thunder rumbled louder and the lightning ran crisscross over the sky. Now I feel seasick too, said the little creature. And then he was sick while Moomin Mama held his head. The sun had set long ago, but in the gleam of the lightning, they noticed a sea troll that kept trying to keep abreast of the boat. Hello there, cried Moomin Troll through the storm to show that he was not afraid. Hello, hello, said the sea troll. You look as though you might be a relation. That would be nice, 
cried Moomin Troll politely, but he thought it was probably a very distant relation because Moomin Trolls are a much finer species than sea trolls. Jump into the boat, Talipa called to the sea troll, otherwise you'll be left behind. The sea troll took a leap over the gunwale of the boat and shook the water off himself like a dog. Grand weather, he said, where are you bound for? Anywhere as long as we can reach land, groaned the little creature who was quite green in the face with seasickness. In that case, I had better take the helm for a bit, said the sea troll. If you keep on this course, you'll go straight out to sea. And then he took over from the hat and the fattener who sat at the helm and made the boat alter course. It was strange how much easier it was now that they had the sea troll with them. The boat danced along, and sometimes it made long leaps over the peaks of the waves. The little creature began to look more cheerful, and Moomintrol shrieked with delight. Only the Hattafat nurse stack staring indifferently at the horizon. They did not care about anything except traveling on from one strange place to the other. I know a fine harbor said the sea troll, but the entrance is so narrow that only superior seamen like myself can manage it. He laughed loudly and made the boat make a mighty leap over the waves. Then they saw land rising out of the sea under the forked lightning. Moom and Mama thought it was a wild and creepy land. Is there anything to eat here? She asked. There is anything you like, said the sea troll. Hold on, for we're going to sail right into the harbor now. At the same moment, the boat rushed into a black ravine where the storm howled between the enormously high faces of rock. The sea foamed white against the cliffs and it looked as though the boat was plunging straight towards them. But it flew light as a bird into a large harbor where the transparent water was as calm and green as in a lagoon. Thank goodness, said Moomin Mama, for she had not really trusted the sea troll. It does look nice here. It depends on your taste, said the sea troll. I suppose I prefer it when a storm is raging. I'd best be off before the waves get smaller. Then he somersaulted down into the sea and was gone. When the Hattafatners saw an unknown land before them, they livened up. Some began to furl the slack sails, and others put out the oars and rowed eagerly towards the flowering green shores. The boat put in at a meadow that was full of wild flowers, and Moomin Troll jumped ashore with the mooring rope. Now, bow and thank the Hattafatners for the voyage, said Moomin Mama. The Moomin Troll made a deep bow, and the little creature wagged his tail gratefully. Thank you very much, said Moom and Mama and Talipa, and they curtsied down to the ground. But when they all looked up again, the Hattafatners had gone on their way. I expect they made themselves invisible, said the little creature. Funny folk. Then all four of them went in among the flowers. The sun was rising now, and the dew was glittering and gleaming. This is where I'd like to live, said Talipa. These flowers are even more beautiful than my old tulip. Besides, my hair never really matched it properly. Look, a house made of real gold, shouted the little creature suddenly, pointing. In the middle of the meadow stood a tower with the sun reflecting itself in its long row of windows. The top story was made entirely of glass and the sunlight gleamed in it like burning red gold. I wonder who lives there, said Moom and Mama. Perhaps it's too early to wake them. But I'm so horribly hungry, said Moom and Troll. Me too, said the little creature in Talipa. And then they all looked at Moom and Mama. Well, all right then, she said. And then she went up to the tower and knocked on the door. For a little while, a hatch in the door opened and a boy with completely red hair looked out. Are you shipwrecked? He asked. Almost, said Moom and Mama, but we're most definitely hungry. Then the boy opened the door wide and invited them to come in. And when he caught sight of Talipa, he made a deep bow, for he had never seen such a beautiful blue hair before. 
and Talipa curtsied just as deeply for she thought his red hair was absolutely lovely. Uh, it's a red and blue couple. Then they all followed him up the spiral staircase. Then they all followed him up the spiral staircase all the way to the top store made of glass where they could see out over the sea in all directions. In the midst of the tower room was a table on which there was an enormous bowl of steaming sea pudding. Is that really for us? asked Moon and Mama. Of course, said the boy. I keep a lookout here when a, there's a storm out at sea and all who escape into my harbor are invited for sea pudding. That's how it's always been. Then they sat round the table and after a very short while, the whole basin was empty. The little creature, who sometimes did not have very good manners, took the bowl with him under the table and licked it completely clean. Thank you so awfully much, said Moomin Mama. You must have invited quite a lot of people up here for sea pudding, I should think. Oh yes, said the boy. People from every corner of the world, snuffkins, seagulls, the little creeps and big folk, snorks and hemulins, and the old angler fish too. I suppose you haven't seen any moomins by any chance, asked Moomin Mama, and she was so excited that her voice quivered. Yes, one, said the boy. That was after the cyclone last Tuesday. That couldn't have been Moomin Papa, could it? cried Moomin Troll. Did he keep putting his tail in his pocket? Yes, he did actually, said the boy. I remember it quite particularly because it looked so funny. Then Moomin Troll and his mother were so happy that they fell into each other's arms and the little creature jumped up and down and cried, Hurrah! Where did he go? asked Moomin Mama. Did he say anything particular? Where is he? How was he? Fine, said the boy. He took the road to the south. Then we must go after him at once, said Moomin Mama. Perhaps we'll catch up with him. Hurry up, children. Where's my hand back? And then she rushed down the spiral staircase so fast that they could scarcely follow her. Wait, cried the boy. Wait a bit. And he caught up with them in the doorway. You must forgive us for not saying goodbye properly, said Moomin Mama, who was hopping up and down with impatience. But you see, it's not that said the boy, now as red in the face as his hair. I just thought, I mean, were there by any chance? Well, out with it, said Moomin Mama. Tulipa, said the boy. Fair Tulipa, I suppose you wouldn't like to stay with me, would you? Gladly, replied Tulipa at once, looking happy. All the time I was sitting up there, I was thinking how well my hair might shine for seafarers in your glass tower and I'm very good at making sea pudding. And then she became a little anxious and looked at Moomin Mama. But of course, I would terribly like to help you to look as well, she said. Oh, I'm sure we'll manage, said Moomin Mama. We'll send you both a letter and tell you what happens. Then they all hugged one another goodbye, and Moomin Troll went on his way southwards with his mother and the little creature. All day they walked through the flowering landscape which Moomin Troll would have liked to explore on his own, but his mother was in a hurry and would not let him stop. Have you ever seen such funny trees? asked the little creature. With such terribly long trunks and then a little tuft at the top, I think they look silly. Wow, Snufkin hates Florida. That's my state, I say with a lot of shame. It's you who's silly, said Moon Mama, who was on edge. Actually, they're palm trees, and they always look like that. Have it your own way, said the little creature who was offended. It had become very hot late in the afternoon. Everywhere the plants dropped and the sun shone down with a creepy red light. Even though Moomins are very fond of warmth, they felt quite limp and would have liked to rest under one of the large cactuses that grew everywhere. But Moomin Mama could not rest until they had found some trace of Moomin Troll's papa. They continued on their way straight southwards, even though it was already beginning to get dark. Suddenly, the little creature stopped and listened. What's that pattering around us? he asked. But now they could hear a whispering and a rustling among the leaves. 
It's only the rain, said Moomin Mama. Now we must crawl in under the cactuses anyway. All night it rained and in the morning it was simply pouring down to the bucketfuls. When they looked out, everything was gray and melancholy. It's no good, we must go and own, said Moomin Mama. But here's something for you that I have been saving until it was really needed. And then she produced a large bar of chocolate from her handbag. She had taken it with her from the old gentleman's wonderful garden. She split it in two and gave them each a piece. Aren't you going to have some? asked Moomin Troll. No, said his mother. I don't like chocolate. And so they walked on in the pouring rain all the, that day and all the next day too. All they found to eat were a few soaping wet yams and one or two figs. On the third day, it rained harder than ever, and each little rivulet had become a foaming torrent. It became more and more difficult to make any progress. The water rose ceaselessly, and at last they had to climb up onto a small rock so as not to be snatched away by the current. When they sat watching the rushing eddies come closer and closer to them and feeling that they were catching cold, floating around everywhere were furniture and houses and big trees the flood had carried with it. I think I want to go home, said the little creature, but no one listened to him. The others had caught sight of something strange that was dancing and whirling toward them in the water. They've been shipwrecked, cried Moomin Troll, who had sharp eyes. A whole family. Mama, we must rescue them. The thing that was lurching towards them was an upholstered armchair. Sometimes it got caught in the treetops that stuck up out of the water, but was pulled free by the current and went drifting on. In the chair sat a wet cat with five equally wet kittens around her. Poor mother, cried Moomin Mama, and she jumped out into the water all the way up to her waist. Hold on to me, and I'll try to catch them with my tail. Moomin Troll took a steady hold of his mother, and the little creature was so excited that it did not manage to do anything at all. Now the armchair was whirling by like lightning, Moomin Mama tied her tail in a half hitch round one of the armrests, and then she pulled. Heave ho, she cried. Heave ho, cried Moomin Troll. Ho, ho, squeaked the little creature. Don't let go. Slowly, the chair swung in toward the rock, and then a helpful wave came and took it up onto the land. The cat picked up her kittens by the scruff of their necks, one by one, and put them in a row to dry. Thank you for your kind help, she said. This is the worst thing that has ever happened to me. It was a catastrophe. And then she began to lick her children. I think the weather is clearing up, said the little creature, who wanted to make them think about something else. He was embarrassed because he had not managed to help in the rescue. And it was true. The clouds were moving apart in a shaft of sunlight flew straight down and then another and all of a sudden the sun was shining over the enormous steaming surface of the water hurrah cried moomin troll now everything will be all right you'll see a small breeze arose chased the clouds away and shook the treetops that were heavy with rain the agitated water calmed down and somewhere a bird began to chirp and the cat purred in the sunshine now we can go on, said Moomin Mama firmly. We don't have time to wait until the water sinks away. Get up into the armchair, children, and then I'll push it out into the lake. I shall stay here, said the cat and yawned. One should never make a needless fuss. When the ground is dry, I'll walk home again. And her five kittens who had recovered in the sunshine sat up and yawned too. Then Moomin Mama pushed the armchair out from the shore Go carefully, cried the little creature. He was sitting on the back rest and looking around, for it had occurred to him that they might find something valuable floating in the water after the flood. 
For example, a casket full of jewels. Why not? He kept a sharp watch and when he suddenly saw something gleaming in the water, he shouted loudly with excitement. Go that way, he cried. There's something shining over there. We haven't got time to fish up everything that's floating around, said Moomin Mama, but she paddled that way all the same because she was a kind mama. It's just an old bottle, said the little creature disappointed when he had hauled it up with his tail. And no nice sweet drink in it either, said Moomin Troll. But don't you see, said his mother seriously, it's something very interesting. It's a message in a bottle. There's a letter inside. And then she took a corkscrew out of her handbag and un uncorked the bottle. With trembling hands, she spread out the letter on her knee and read out loud, Dear Finder, please do what you can to rescue me. My beautiful house has been swept away by the flood, and now I am sitting lonely, hungry, and cold in a tree while the water rises higher and higher, an unhappy Moomin. Lonely and hungry and cold, said Moomin Mala, and she cried. Oh, my poor dear Moomin Troll, your father has probably drowned long ago. Don't cry, said Moomin Troll. Perhaps he's sitting in a tree somewhere very close. After all, the water is going down as fast as can be. And so it was. Here and there, hillocks and fences and roofs were already sticking up above the surface of the water. And now the birds were singing at the tops of their voices. The armchair bobbed slowly along towards a hill where a lot of people were running about, pulling their belongings out of the water. Why, there's my armchair, cried a big hemulin, who was gathering his dining room furniture to together on the shore. What do you think you're doing sailing around in my armchair? And a rotten boat it made too, said Moomin Mama crossly, and she stepped ashore. I wouldn't have it for anything in the world. Don't annoy him, whispered the little creature. He may bite. Rubbish, said Moomin Mama. Come along now, children. And they walked along the shore while the Hemulin examined the wet stuffing in his chair. Look, said Moomin Troll, pointing to a Marabou stork who was walking around scolding to himself. I wonder what he's lost. He looks even angry than the Hemulin. Little impudent child, said the Marabou stork, for he had good ears. If you were nearly a hundred years old and had lost your spectacles, you wouldn't look exactly pleased either. And then he turned his back to them and continued his search. Come along now, said Moomin Mama. We must look for your father. She took Moomin Troll and the little creature by the hand and hurried on. After a while, they saw something gleaming in the grass where the water had subsided. I bet it's a diamond, cried the little creature. But when they looked more closely, they saw that it was only a pair of spectacles. They're the marble storks. Don't you think, mother? Asked Moomin Troll. Must be, she said. You had better run back and give them to him. But hurry up for your poor father sitting somewhere hungry and wet and all alone. Moomin Troll ran as fast as he could on his short legs until in the distance, he saw the stork poking about in the water. Hello there, hello, he cried. Here are your spectacles, Uncle Stork. Well, well, fancy that, said the Marable Stork, very pleased. Perhaps you're not such an impossible little child after all. And he put on his spectacles and turned his head this way and that. I really must go at once, said Moomin Troll. You see, we're searching too. Well, well, I see, said the Marable Stork in a friendly voice. What for? My father, said Moomin Troll, he's up a tree somewhere. The Marabou Storks thought for a long time. Then he said firmly, you will never manage it alone, but I will help you because you found my spectacles. Then he picked up Moomin Troll in his beak very carefully and put him on his back, flapped his wings a few times and sailed away over the shore. Moomin Troll had never flown before and he thought it was a tremendous fun and a little scary. 
He was also quite proud when the Marlboro Stork landed beside his mother and the little creature. I am at your service in the matter of searches, madam, said the Marlboro Stork, bowing to Moomin Mama. If the family will climb on board and we shall effect our departure at once. And then he lifted first her and then the little creature who squeaked with excitement. Hold on tight, he said. We're going to fly out over the water now. I think this is the most wonderful thing we've been through so far, said Moomin Mama. Why, flying is not nearly as frightening as I, as I thought. Now keep a good look out for Moomin Papa in all directions. The Maribo storks flew in wide circles and came in low over each treetop. They saw a lot of people sitting amidst the branches and none of them was who they were looking for. I shall have to rescue those creeps over there later on, said the Marabo stork, who had become really inspired by the rescue expedition. He flew to and fro above the water for a long time. The sun began to set and then everything seemed quite hopeless. Suddenly, Moomin Mama cried, there he is, and began to wave her arms so wildly she nearly fell off. Papa, shouted Moomin Troll, and the little creature cried out too out of pure sympathy. There on one of the highest branches of an enormous tree sat a wet, sad Moomin Papa. Staring out over the water he, beside him, he had tied a distress flag. He was so amazed and delighted when the Maribo stork landed in the tree and the whole of his family climbed down onto the branches that he could not say a word. Now we shall never be separated again, sniffed Moomin Mama and took him in her arms. How are you? Have you caught cold? Where have you been all this time? Was the house you built a very fine one? Did he think of us often? It was a very fine house, alas, said Moom and Papa. My dear little boy, you have grown. Well, well, said the Maribo stork, who was beginning to feel touched. I think I had better put you down on dry land and try to rescue a few more before the sun goes down. It's very pleasant rescuing people. And then he took them back to the shore while they all talked at the same time about every dreadful thing they had been through. All along the shore, people had lit fires at which they were warming themselves and cooking food, for most had lost their homes. The Maribel Stork put down Moomin Troll, his father and mother, and the little creature at one of the brown fires, and with a hasty farewell, he flew out over the water again. Good evening, said the two anglerfish, who had lit the tree. Do sit down and the soup will be ready in a moment. Thank you very much, said Moom and Papa. You have no idea what a fine house I had before the flood. Built it all by myself, but if I get a new one, you will be welcome any time. How big is it? asked the little creature. Three rooms, said Moom and Papa. One sky blue, one sunshine yellow, and one spotted and a guest room in the attic for you, little creature. Do you really mean us to live there too? Asked Moomin Mama, very pleased. Of course, he said. I looked for you always, everywhere. I could never forget our dear old stove. Then they sat and told one another about their experiences and ate soup until the moon had risen and the fires began to go out along the shore. Then they borrowed a blanket from the angler fish and curled up close next to one another and fell asleep. By morning, the water had gone down a good way and they all went into the sunshine in a very good mood. The little creature danced in front of them and tied a bow in his tail because he was so happy. All day they walked and wherever they went, it was beautiful. For after the rain, the most wonderful flowers had come out everywhere, and the trees had both flowers and fruit. They only needed to shake a tree slightly, and the fruit fell down around them. At last, they came to a small valley that was more beautiful than any they had seen that day. And there, in the midst of the meadow, stood a house that almost looked like a tall stove, very elegant and painted blue. Why, that's my house, cried Moomin Papa, quite 
beside himself with joy. It must have floated here, and here it is. Hurrah, said, shouted the little creature, and then they all rushed down into the valley to admire the house. The little creature even climbed up on the sh roof. There he shouted even louder, for up on the chimney hung a necklace of large real pearls that had lodged there during the flood. Now we're rich, he cried. We can buy a car, an even bigger house. No, said Moomin Mama. This house is the most beautiful one we could ever have. And then she took Moomin Troll by the hand and went into the sky blue room. And there, in the valley, they spent the whole of their lives, apart from a few times when they left it and traveled for a change. Well, that's the end of Moomin's In the Great Flood. Uh, like I said before, Tov Janssen wrote this in the last few months of World War II in 1945. And I do feel as if it does kind of parallel with a lot of uh, feelings that families all across the world were experienced because of World War II. There was this fear of like the unknown and there was also, but there's also this theme of uh, rebuilding and reconnection after this mass destruction. Mumu and Papa got separated from his family and similarly to a lot of families got separated because of the war. If you're interested in more and more about like the history of Moomin and also Tove Janssen, uh, check out this video called An Amateur's Guide to the Moomins. I'll put a link in the description below. Let me know what you thought about the story or if you read any of the Moomin books yourself. And also let me know who your favorite Moomin character is. Mine's is, mine's is Little Mai. You can also talk to me on Twitter and Instagram at Inley Owens. Hope to see you next time where I make a pastry dish inspired by the Shadow and Bone trilogy. So until then, bye!